In this video, I'm going to show you the most consistent man-beating concept in Madden 23, and it comes to us out of the Colts playbook. We're going to be taking a look at the tight slots halfback week. If you want to get my entire Colts offensive ebook, make sure that you become a Patreon member. It's only $10 to do so, and it's going to get you access to all of my Madden 23 offensive and defensive ebooks. Now, tight slots halfback week is good for a variety of different reasons, but one of the best things that this formation does is it gives you the opportunity to consistently be able to attack man-to-man -man coverage. And it, it really does simplify, I think, your offense to a degree. Now, uh, we're going to set a couple of audibles here. The first audible is Flood. is probably the best play in the formation and the most versatile passing play. You have inside zone, you have four verticals, and then you also have this play mesh spot, which is the play that we're going to be taking a look at today. Now, you can run the same concept from Flood, and I do a lot of the time, um, but if you don't have a slot apprentice or holler master, you can just do it out of the play mesh spot. Now, what I like to do is come out and gun bunch, typically come out and bunch offset, uh, bunch trail, and then we're going to audible over to our tight slots halfback weak formation, and in this case, we're going to audible to mesh spot. Now, what I like to do with this play is we're going to smart route the post route on the right side of the screen. We're going to streak our uh, outside receiver there. We're going to put this slot receiver on a uh, slant route. We're going to put the tight end on an out route. And then what I like to do with the running back, you can kind of do whatever you want to do. But I love to put him on either just a table route, um, a basic out route, a block and release route. Any of those routes will be fine. Or if you wanted to, you could easily block him as well and still kind of get a lot of bang for your buck. But what you'll see is in this formation, if you put your running back on an out route, it's going to give him the opportunity to beat man-to-man -man coverage fairly consistently. Um, you can also put him on, and I'll show that real quick, you can also put him on an option route and if you have the short in elite ability, he will actually cook man coverage. Now, right here, he kind of beats man. But again, if you put the short in elite ability on him, which there's a lot of backs in the game that get that for discount, then he's going to do a really good job at attacking man to man coverage. Now, the other thing is you got to understand a lot of people are going to be manning that running back up. So I do love the out route. I do think the out route does really good at, at attacking man to man coverage. This route to uh, Keenan Allen, I got to not freeform that, but what you'll see here, and I'll talk about the difference uh, between these two routes here in just a second. Um, this route that he's on is like kind of similar to the uh, curl flat post out of the trips tied in. It's kind of similar to mesh post, uh, maybe a little bit different, but basically it runs a little sharper. Uh, and so you need to not freeform it. Otherwise the freeform will kind of dumb out. And that's just, as you saw, I threw a pick previously um, but it does also get pretty deep down the field so let's say for example that your opponent was running uh, which this happens a lot um, people want to run like double Mabel coverage right so maybe they want to run like some kind of double flat coverage to stop the you know flood corner route or something like that what you'll notice with this play is this post route will actually destroy uh, that coverage as you can see right here he's going to get about 40 to 50 yards down the field deep if you leave him on the post route that he is on, and that is much better for zone, in my opinion. It's going to be a really good zone beater. Now, as far as man goes, if you are playing consistently man, one of the things that I would recommend is put him on a slot apprentice post because the slot apprentice post has a, a little bit sharper of a cut, and you'll see it's going to get a little cleaner separation um, specifically against man coverage. Now, the problem with the slot apprentice post is if I was to go back to that double Mabel uh, style of coverage, especially if I back off these corners, what you'll notice is this um, This is a 30-yard, you know, this isn't a 30-yard cloud, but even if it's not a 30-yard cloud, he'll still play this relatively well. And a 30-yard cloud will basically bag this post. Um, I guess I audible to a blitz somehow. But, uh, but anyway, so my recommendation would be to use the slot apprentice post in situations when you are kind of assuming that they're probably in man coverage, right? They're probably in man coverage. You want to use that slot apprentice post because if you use that slot apprentice post against zone, um, you'll see here that that cloud flat, see how he's kind of in the area? That's the problem with that. So um, you can throw it to him before he gets to the area, but as you can see, like it, it's definitely a problem. So what the slant post concept does though is it kind of pins the user in the middle of the field and it makes the user have to make a decision about who he's going to guard, right? Typically, people actually a lot of times right now, if they're playing more zone, they're probably going to take the, 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 the post, or I apologize, the slant. 
if they're playing more man, then they're going to take the post almost every time. So in this example, um, you know, something like this, let's take the post and I'll show you. These vert hooks in the middle of the field, they're really not that good of zones. You can throw just like that, kind of right in front of them, and it's really hard for them to uh, break up any passes. You're not going to see uh, a lot of pass breakups with with any kind of zone coverage. So even if they have a vert hook in the area here, you'll see like this is pretty decent coverage. That mid read will play uh, pretty well against the post, especially if you put him on the slot apprentice post. Um, but if you leave this deeper post that we have, I would smart route it. Uh, but if you leave this deeper post that we have, you'll notice that I can throw that post over in that area of the field just like that. And you see that this can now become a big play. So now they have to bail to the post. And this is where this play becomes, I think, one of the best concepts in the game this year. Because not only does it beat man coverage, but now they truly have to fully, um, they have to fully commit to the post. And if they do start running a lot of double flats, there's other variations of this play that we can run. Um, one of them is to take the running back, put him on the streak, and then put this receiver on a flat. That's another option that you can do. Um, or just put the running back on that option route, put him on that ghost route. If they start to run a lot of zones, um, you can do that stuff as well. But what you'll see here, I threw that slant route super late, uh, but what you'll see here is this slant route really can do a, a pretty good job at just sitting in soft spots and zones. Um, it's going to be really hard for zone coverage to be able to, to kind of play this slant, especially when you have this tight end out route that pulls the flat zones out of the way. Now their user has to really sit in the middle of the field and make a decision. Now, you, like I said, if, you're, if you feel pressure, you can block the running back and you'll be fine. But what you'll see right here is I can throw it right in front or right in between. Of course, I say that I throw it quick. Um, I can throw that right in front of the vert hook typically. Um, that was kind of a bad animation there, but I'll show it to you again. Let me get to an actual coverage that they'll probably run. Typically, people, from what I've noticed, especially if they're blitzing, like this, this concept is almost unguardable in a, in a pressure situation. They just have to pray that their pressure gets there. Um, but what you'll see right, this is what I'm talking about. See how the vert hook kind of falls back uh, to where the post is? That's the idea. So, again, if they're running a lot of zone and they're typically running like vert hooks on that left side, because they can only run a vert hook. Typically, when people run vert hooks, if they're gonna if they're gonna double flat, they can only run a vert hook on one side of the field. So another little tip that I would have for you is to basically just flip um, who's running what. So instead of having your slant post coming that direction, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a post. We're gonna have this wheel route to buyers, and we're gonna put a hitch in the middle of the field. So do something like this right here. Now the vert hook is over there on the other side, and now that seam is wide open. So you see how this really spaces the field well and attacks the defense in a variety of ways. It's able to beat man, able to beat zone consistently, and you're also able to kind of freestyle out of it to uh, equip it to be able to beat a variety of different adjustments your opponent's going to do. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to take your Madden game to the next level, you want to get my entire Colts offensive ebook, make sure that you join the Patreon. By becoming a member, you're going to get access to all of our offensive and defensive ebooks, as well as any new ebooks or updates that we release while you are a member. Thanks for watching. Head down to the description and go check out the Patreon page.